Hello everyone. Today's topic is again from medical surgical nursing. It is from eye disorders. Disease name is refractive errors. Let's go ahead with the video. Refractive errors means the disorder of eye in which shape of eye cannot bend the light correctly. As a result, the image that is formed becomes blurred because shape of eye cannot bend the light correctly. This is caused due to inability of focusing of light at the retina. That means light enters the eye, but it is unable to uh, focus, being focused at the retina. There are types of refractive errors. They are myopia, hypermetropia, presbyopia, and astigmatism. Let's learn about them one by one. Myopia, also called as short-sightedness, is a condition in which the received light from outside source focuses in front of the retina instead of focusing on the retina. So, because of this, only near objects seem clear and distant object does not seem clear. Next is hypermetropia, called as long-sightedness. In this condition, light is focused behind the retina instead of being focused on the retina. Because the light is focused behind, far object seems clear, but near object seems blurred. And this might, this might also cause abnormal shape of the cornea in the long term. In presbyopia, presbyopia is also called as loss of vision with age. Uh, it is commonly found in old age group. Uh, this is a disorder. Presbyopia is a disorder in which uh, there is inability to focus the light, resulting in problem with the refraction of the eye. In front of the retina, in back of the retina, on the retina. Anyhow, in the disease condition called presbyopia, there is difficulty to focus the light, resulting in problem with refraction also known as aging eye condition. Next is astigmatism. In astigmatism, there are symptoms of both short and long sightedness. In astigmatism, there is abnormal curvature of cornea. That means cornea is abnormally curved, again related to the shape of eye. Here, because of abnormal curvature, there is symptom of both short-sightedness and long-sightedness because if the curve is abnormal, light is focused both at front of the retina, also at the back of the retina. Etiology of refractive errors can be, first of all, infection, infection by virus, adenovirus, and then injury due to optic nerve damage. If there is a nerve damage, no matter uh, however the light has been received, however the light has been reflected, if there is nerve damage, your vision message cannot reach up to your brain. Genetic, it can be genetically inherited from parents to offspring. Aging, age above 50 years, when the age is above 50 years, patient begin to face degeneration of tissues. And because of degeneration of optic tissues, there is abnormality in the shape of the eye. It can also be caused due to other existing infections, previous past eye surgeries, ultraviolet radiation exposure, and optic nerve disorders. Because of eye surgeries, when there is, uh, when there is any kind of eye surgery, there is too much excess pressure given to the eye, either stretching or non-stretching. So that can result in future, after some years, that can result in refractive errors because the shape of cur cur curvature is changed. Next is ultraviolet radiation exposure. When ultraviolet rays from any source are exposed to the eye, it makes the eye unable to focus properly by damaging the shape of the eye. Optic nerve disorder, when there is any nerve disorder, any kind of nerve, uh, nervous system disorder, and that is related to optic nerve, then it can result in disturbance of perception of vision. Clinical features of this disease can be, first of all, blurring of vision, 
and because of that they're unable to focus the light at retina double vision next diplopia because of abnormal curvature of the cornea haziness in vision haziness is can be similar to blurred blurred vision this is because inability to focus the light at the retina either the light is focused in front of the retina or back of the retina while exposure to bright light bright bright light halos are formed halos are circular cloud like structure that is formed when eye is unable to focus while exposed at bright light there is mild headache because of sensory problem there can also be eye straining because eye is unable to focus at anything and because of that there is too much pressure on the eye so eye straining or fatigue there can be occasional diplopia double vision because of change in the curvature same thing pathophysiology can be described as first of all etiological factors any kind of etiological factors that make the eye susceptible to refractive error abnormal vision due to etiological factors there are degenerative changes caused by gradual loss of elasticity of the lens so by the time i lose the elasticity of the lens shape is changed so this causes decreased ability to accommodate the eye the muscles around the eye are unable to accommodate the eye properly which results in a refractive errors there is blurred vision there is haziness in vision there is difficult to focus properly there is headache in order to diagnose this disease first of all we need history taking in history taking we need to find out if they had any previous eye disease if they had if they were occupationally exposed to ultraviolet radiation or if they had had any kind of drug related to any other systemic illness other diagnostic test can be corneal topography in this test the shape of the cornea abnormal shape of the cornea can be measured this result this reason in abnormality of cornea can be diagnosed through the device called photography slit lamp examination this has already been explained in the diagnostic test separate video slit lamp examination in slit lamp examination we visualize each and every part of the eye microscopically tonometry we can measure the pressure of fluid inside the eye next is retinoscopy retinoscopy so it is a flexible device that can find out the abnormalities of other parts of eye as well as retina and the inability of retina to focus can be identified by presence of swelling and scarring if there is any swelling or scarring at retina then the inability of retina to focus the reason for inability of retina to focus can be found out now we move on to management first of all there is non pharmacological management followed by pharmacological management and then nursing management you can also also mention pharmacological management as medical management so first of all non pharmacological management can be lens correction we can use a lens in form of spectacles in form of contact lens anyway according to the disease short sighted lens or long sighted lens lens correction can be done so that focusing can be done properly use of antibiotic if there is any infection foreign body can be prevented to enter in the eye if the, any of the diagnostic test like slit lamp examination tonometry finds out what is the cause then management should be done on the basis of that cause pharmacological or medical management includes first of all cycloplegic drugs these cycloplegic drugs are used to paralyze relax ciliary moment ciliary muscles sorry ciliary muscles for a while for some time so that exact refractive error can be found out how much distance the eye can focus and up to how much distance i cannot focus this can be found out by giving cycloplegic drugs in the form of drops one to two drops 
Next is cholinergic drug. This can be used so that ciliary muscle can be contracted and aqueous fluid can be increased. If aqueous fluid amount increases, then there are chances that if the change in the curvature of the limb can be corrected. So cholinergic drugs are given like pilocarpin, carbapol, so that aqueous fluid can be produced normally, back again normally. Next is beta blockers can be used to reduce the aqueous humor production. If there is already excess production of aqueous humor fluid inside the eye, then beta blockers can be used to reduce the production. Like beta xolol, timolol, 5-MG. Surgical management. After surgical management, we'll have surgical management. Surgical management first is laser eye surgery. Laser is used to treat the treat whatever illness is there in the eye. To treat short sightedness and long sightedness, laser eye surgery is used. The laser reshapes the cornea. Next is automatic limb. Keratoplasty can be done in this. Keratin is protein, plasty is correction. Abnormal corneal tissue is replaced with a healthy donor corneal tissue. It can help to correct the curvature of the lens and hence correct short and long sightedness. So, automatic lens, LLAR, keratoplast. Photorefractive keratotomy. Now, tomy is removal, keratinic protein again. In this process, myopia is corrected especially. So, surface corneal cells are removed in photorefractive keratotomy. The surface cells which were disturbing the shape of the eye are removed surgically and then healthy corneal cells are left inside. We have nursing management next. In being a nurse, what is the role of a nurse for a patient with refractive errors? First of all, administration of medicine and fluid. Eye disorders are generally corrected either medically or surgically. So, nursing management should be related to both medical and surgical management. First of all, administration of medicine and fluids, cyclophagic drugs should be done carefully with the right documentation, right tools and right documentation. Hemodynamic pressure, vital time, arterial blood gas should be monitored so that if there is any increment in body normal level, then there are some procedures or some drugs that should be avoided. So, hemodynamic pressure, vital signs monitoring is very, very important. Similarly, any kind of medical history along with allergic history should be obtained. Medical history means any kind of systemic disease, any blood transfusion or any drug that is usually taken by the patient. Also, allergy. To avoid anaphylactic reaction, allergic history should be obtained. While administering a new medicine related to eye disease, side effects should be observed especially in aging patients because aging patients might not be able to tolerate the side effects as much as young patients. So while administering a new medicine, side effects should be observed. Patient response to treatment should be observed. Is the patient satisfied or not? Is the patient able to view properly or not? Or is the patient having any side effect? Patients respond to the treatment, either it is surgical, medical, non-pharmacological, but the response should be observed. So this was the end of the video. Next topic will be continued in next video. Thank you so much for watching.